Rose watches two new prostitutes in Petter Bellish's brothel practicing their work. She repeats Petter's advice to ease into the act slowly and with passion. She tells the new employees to wash and dress for work that night before walking away. She is followed by Daisy, who she instructs in the merits of their upmarket brothel. Rose greets Lord Orson who is passing with a young man as she tells Daisy that they cater to a higher class of customer than she was used to in Haystack Hall. Daisy watches Armeka leading a client away. Rose notes that Armeka pretends not to speak the common tongue in order to seem exotic and reveals that she actually grew up in Flea Bottom. Daisy says that Armeka is beautiful, but Rose is dismissive of her colleague. Suddenly, Lord Commander Yano Slint enters with several of his men. Rose greets him with familiarity. More gold cloaks enter with a bloody prisoner and Yano snaps his fingers at his men who begin to search the brothel. Rose reminds him that Petter is the establishment's owner and Janos cites orders. Rose wonders who the orders came from and Janos tells her only that they are from someone who doesn't care what Petter thinks. Majen is dragged into the room, holding her baby girl Bara who is one of Robert's bastards. Janos looks at his prisoner who nods recognition. Janos then signals one of his men who takes the baby from her sobbing mother, draws his knife and hesitates. Janos tells his man to kill the baby and then does it himself when his subordinate cannot. Rose and Majen are distraught. Rose is still visibly upset about the death of Bara. She is so distressed that she falls apart in front of a client. Lord Petter Bellish comes into her room and Rose confides in him. However, Bellish compares her to a beautiful girl he purchased from a Lassini pleasure house for an exorbitant price. The girl was so sad Bellish gained no money from her and he sold her to a lord who wanted to transform her, a man who derived pleasure from things most men would find unthinkable. After this lesson, when he asks Rose if one day off will make her smile again, Rose smiles and assures him it will. Tyrion Lannister, acting on a suggestion from his enforcer Bronn, hires Rose and Daisy as a late name day present for his nephew King Joffrey Baratheon. Tyrion hopes this will give the sadistic Joffrey an opportunity to release his frustrations away from Sansa. They wait for him in his chamber, guarded by Sandor Clegane. When Joffrey arrives, Rose wishes him a happy name day and then reaches for his crotch. He flinches and instructs Rose to touch Daisy. He asks if Rose can hit Daisy and she spanks Daisy gently. Joffrey asks if Tyrion sent them and Rose says that Tyrion chose them himself. Joffrey takes off his belt and gives it to Rose to use. He forces Rose to hit Daisy hard enough to make her scream, grabbing her by the throat when she merely spanks her colleague. Joffrey hands Rose a stag's head scepter and she protests that too much pain will spoil the pleasure. He loads his crossbow as Rose warns him that his uncle might find out. He tells Rose that he wants Tyrion to find out and orders her to take Daisy to Tyrion's chambers to show him what has happened or she will also be beaten. He aims the crossbow at Rose and orders her to begin, as Daisy screams. Rose is captured by Queen Regent Cersei Lannister, who mistakenly believes that she is Tyrion's lover, as a result of the Lannister pendant Tyrion gave Rose during their liaison in Winterfell. She has Rose beaten and kept prisoner. She plans to use her captivity to force Tyrion into keeping Joffrey safe, believing that Tyrion is plotting to kill him. When Cersei says that she has his whore, Tyrion, thinking she has the dark-haired Shay, remarks that he thought she preferred blondes, but it is red-haired Rose that she has brought in and displayed beaten to him. Cersei explains that she will kill her in the most gruesome way, if harm comes to Joffrey while he mons the city walls, as Tyrion plans. Tyrion plays along to maintain the secret that Shay is his true lover. Rose does the same. Tyrion vows to free Rose and she begs him not to forget her. Some time after the Battle of Blackwater Bay, Rose was freed. She is visited by Varys, though she doesn't realize who he is until she discovers his eunuch status. Varys gets Rose to admit she's afraid of Littlefinger, and tells her that unlike her current employer, he protects those who work for him. 